Google's mission to make the world's information universally accessible took an incredibly ambitious turn in 2007 when they launched the Street View Project to give users a glimpse into what places all over the world actually look like at street level, everywhere from New Delhi to that deli down the street. But how were they able to capture images from so many places? The idea actually started out pretty simply. A special camera attached to the top of a car and lots and lots and lots of driving. Google initially worked with a company called Immersive Media to use a 12-sided camera that could replace early clunky prototypes that looked something like uh, luggage sitting on a rack on top of your uncle's van. Shortly thereafter, Google was able to create its own cameras, which look like small spheres with lenses all over the outside, allowing Google to capture 360 degree views of streets and landmarks as the vehicle was in motion. These cameras also contained no moving parts to allow them to be more reliable out in the field, especially important for driving through areas with extreme climate conditions. They also feature lasers that scan the environment to create 3D models models that allow people using Street View to double click on a spot that they want to see and have the service show them that particular point accurately. After these cameras take pictures of their surroundings, images from the individual lenses are stitched together to create one continuous panoramic shot that you can scroll around in easily in Street View. While most shots come out looking decent, you do occasionally see instances where the stitching didn't exactly work as intended, which come out as street signs that are cut in half or even people that appear to be missing arms or heads. Yikes. But despite the minor hiccups, Street View continued to expand both its camera technology and its footprint around the globe. Currently, Google not only has a standard fleet of cars to capture Street View images, but also a special backpack with a similar camera attached to allow users to see views of hard to reach places. A trolley that's been used to provide looks inside places like museums and stadiums, tricycles for narrow streets like you might find in Europe, and and even snowmobiles that have been used at the Winter Olympic Games. Partly due to the versatility of Google's camera technology, they've been able to add more and more locations around the Earth every year. And although the project started out just covering major urban areas in the United States, Street View now has images of public streets and roads in over 80 countries and dependencies, and views of landmarks in many, many more. Users are now also able to submit their own panoramic shots, adding to Street View's presence, especially in areas where Google hasn't taken their cameras yet. Street View also now works with Google Cardboard, allowing you to experience locations around the world in virtual reality with your smartphone. Not a bad idea if you really wanted to see some far off location, but uh, can't afford to get on a plane. But as useful as Street View has been, many have expressed concerns over privacy. After all, the whole project is based around recording everything that it can in public view. Generally speaking, people have little to no legal expectation of privacy when they're driving or walking on a public street, although Google has had to settle legal disputes in a few places over this issue. They've had a long-standing policy of trying to blur things like faces or license plates that its cameras capture, especially with Street View getting looks at uh, people engaged in some <clears throat> questionable activities. But even with Google's attempts to at least somewhat protect the privacy of the people its cameras see, I still wouldn't recommend, you know, being out on your lawn nude sunbathing if you know that there's a Street View car in the neighborhood. Speaking of the neighborhood, Fresh books. Let's say, for example, you cut lawns in the neighborhood or do yard work or you're a plumber or you make small arts and crafts projects or you paint murals or whatever else it is you do for your small business. Fresh books is on a mission to make your life more organized and make you more Ha, I was about to say more stressed. No, that would be the opposite. Less stressed with their easy to use tool for crafting and sending professional invoices in seconds. And that feels like a really old
old talking point because FreshBooks does so much more than that. It allows you to track your expenses by taking pictures of your receipts and it basically does the rest. It allows you to collect deposits from customers like if you're a painter for example and you need to purchase material before you show up on the job site and you want to make sure you don't get screwed over on something like that. It allows you to not only send the invoices but see if the customer has viewed it and request payment directly through the app and just generally continues to improve over time. And the best part about it is you can try FreshBooks for free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com forward slash techquickie, which is linked in the video description, and entering techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. Try it out. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you wanna check out our other channels, click here. We've got a great video over on channel, super fun. Also, if you want to see a particular video on Fast as Possible, leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe. So simple, right?